There is something that your daddy and I... There's something that want. Mummy and me want to talk to you about. It's a bit serious, though. Yeah. We Live in Time has been getting a lot of buzz since its world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival last month. It stars Florence Pugh and Andrew Garfield and follows their characters' relationship over a decade, but not necessarily in the way that you think. CBC senior entertainment reporter Eli Glasner is here in studio with us now with a review. So Eli, who's behind this film? John Crowley. He broke me in half with Brooklyn and Saoirse Ronan a couple years ago, and now he is back to uh, do it again this is a dramedy it's a rom-com it is it is sad and sweet and and silly might be your next favorite love story. And as you were saying, one of the things that makes this special is, so that has these two characters, there they are, Almit, who's a very ambitious chef, and this IT guy, Tobias. It takes their story and throws it into a blender. So We Live in Time is told in segments of time, not necessarily in order. And I think part of it is about appreciating those moments that you are in. And so just to give you a sense, in the first opening 10, 15 minutes of the film, I saw uh, Elmet cooking a meal, I saw a glimpse of a pregnancy, I saw a child, I saw a doctor's diagnosis. So we have this tsunami of life events and we're trying to figure out the chronology. But let me help you with that. I'm going to take you back to the beginning of this couple. Andrew Garfield, you know him, you love him. He plays Tobias. Now, Tobias is a very controlled, button-down kind of guy. He likes order, he likes his lists. He does IT for Weedabix. And then one night, leaves the house. He's trying to get his divorce papers signed. And then he wakes up in the hospital, no underwear, sitting across from a woman. Let's take a look. So sorry, but do we know each other? Oh, yeah, no, um, sorry, I, I, I ran you over. Sorry. Sorry. It's almost Canadian the way he's half apologizing <laughs> for being yes. run over, like, sorry, it's all right. So that's exactly the perfect kind of meet cute but meet they do and uh, you know he gets out of the hospital gets the cast off they have coffee coffee leads to another thing and another thing a night over and then slowly a life together but what is interesting because of the way the movie works you know the destination okay. but you don't know the route so we have to kind of figure out how they're going to get to where we know they're going as you were speaking, we were showing visuals from the movie, right? And so much of it is about the way they're looking at each yeah. other. Movies like this, it's all about the chemistry. Do these two have it? And you know, in the, the run up to this film, Andrew and Florence were everywhere, right? And they were so adorable. All these amazing viral moments. You wondered, could this movie possibly compete with it does. They have like a, a fusion reactor between the two of them. The chemistry is undeniable. And so we had a chance to talk to both of them about what was happening in front of the camera on set. And what Florence was telling us is it was about listening. It was about being present as actors and about how the little moments weren't over rehearsed. Take a look. It's very much alive and it was very... It was so free. There was no planned beats. There was no uh, like re re like repetition in um, in a in a way we'd react to things. It was just like we would jump into a scene and we would live for a second. They would live for a second. Mm. They were even telling us how, as characters, they would talk to each other and help as their characters like pick the wardrobe. Okay, we have a wedding scene. What kind of jacket do you want? him to wear? What kind of ring should I buy? So extending those characters off the page. But I think part of that chemistry comes from their connection and the humor. And I want to go back to Andrew Garfield. So you may recall, I had a wonderful moment with him in Toronto at the film festival. And I knew that he was playing this Weedabix guy. And this is someone who's been Spider-Man. He was a monk in a Scorsese film. And so I wanted to ask Andrew, you know, Different kind of role, a regular Joe. How does that feel? Take a look. 
a Weetabix salesman. Talk yeah. to me about relishing yeah, yeah. the relative normality yeah. of that kind of role. Yeah, I wanted to play someone sexy finally. I wanted to play like a <laughs> yeah. like a symbol of sex. Excellent. And I found that that character. Yeah. I found He's having fun. We're having fun. But I hadn't seen the film yet. And you know what? He was right. Tobias is sexy. What is attractive is he's so comfortable in his own skin and that he's funny. And what I love so dearly about this film and what I think sometimes love stories don't get right. Like how do you show people falling in love in a movie? I think part of it is you let down your guard. Mm -hmm. You poke fun at yourself. You're being vulnerable. We're teasing each other. That is where you start to see those sparks. And the great thing about Andrew, he knew that in this movie, in the filming of it, the fact that he was able to be playful meant that he was in a safe space so that he could really grow as an actor. Take a look. I know I'm in good hands if I'm feeling silly. And if I'm allowed to be really, really, if I feel a permission mm. from the people around me to be that part of myself, which I only, I only will allow out on very, like in very, very specific circumstances. So this is a film that has huge, amazing, dramatic moments, hilarious moments, heartbreaking moments, but what it does best are the little micro moments, the kind of thing that you cannot script, mm. that you just have to capture. And that is what they do, and that is why I adore it. Let's take a look at my rating. May not be a big surprise. I'm a happy Ooh. camper. I, I, I left the film floating. I think it's just swoon-worthy and wonderful. So there you go. Oh, I have goosebumps. Can't wait to see it. Eli Glasner, CBC Senior Entertainment Reporter and Hopeless Romantic. Thank you. Yep, very much so. <laughs> Guilty.